But there are new initiatives that give some hope to the health of the sea and its inhabitants. This ship, the OD-6 from Stellendam, fishes for more than just fish. It also fishes for litter. Dit is van anderhalve dag. We zijn hier uh, zondagnacht mee begonnen en uh, nou, het is nu van anderhalve dag. Uh, meestal hebben we zo rond de 400 kilo gemiddeld per week. En dat 50 weken in een jaar. Dus dat, uh, dat is een uh, flinke hoeveelheid. We doen in totaal denk ik zo'n 5 à 6 jaar mee. En ik schat zo ongeveer dat we 150 ton vuil hebben opgevist in de jaren. We zien wel op sommige plekken waar we veel vissen dat het daar absoluut minder gaat worden nu. Alleen in de, de drukke scheepvaartroutes, daar zie je toch wel dat het een beetje blijft. Maar ja, daar varen natuurlijk veel schepen, dus ja, er zal ook meer ja, overboord gezet worden. Dat was nog een oud pekhaakje van vroeger. Dat we hier toen gewoon ook weggegooid, is afgebroken. Nu pakken wij het op en we gooien het netjes in de zak. Dus er is echt wel verschil met vroeger. Misschien was ik het wel die een beet had aan het tube En nu doe ik dat niet meer. Zo is het wel. Niks meer en niks minder. In less enlightened days, all this would end up in the sea. Now there is no excuse for throwing it overboard, given the facilities available. If it's retrieved, the birds don't suffer and the fishermen don't waste time re-catching it in their nets. On the one hand, you need to create a clean environment for your employees who work in the port and the people who live in the port. And at the same time, we should create a mind shift and not always translate sustainability into costs, but uh, see if we can get revenue streams out of it. What are the revenues generated by waste? The processing costs money, but the raw materials are not lost. They will become new products. Almost everything gets a new life. In the end, only 7% is good for nothing. The other waste that can't be recycled is disposed of here. It's heading for incineration, so even the most useless waste is eventually turned into energy. In principle, waste is also money because it can be reused again. But it, it means discipline on board of a ship to really look at what kind of waste do you produce and how do you deliver that waste in a port and not in the sea. This is one of the places where young sailors learn just that. In a three-day course, students of the maritime academies, like this one at Eimerden, focus on sustainability in shipping in lessons and workshops. 
What we basically try to do is, first of all, give them information, but mostly give them the opportunity to exchange ideas and to process the information. Because it's the information that's important, but it's even more important is the way that they perceive the information. They need to take it away and become responsible. People. We are convinced that awareness is not just knowledge, it's not just knowing, but it's about what you do with it. So you need to give participants time to discuss amongst themselves and to think about what it means for them in their daily lives and in their future on board of ships. We, as a shipping industry, realize that it's not just innovations and regulations that do the trick, but that we need to give people the tools, old people and new people, to, to take responsibility and to know what the problems are and to know what they can do to solve those problems. Because the marine litter problem is not a very difficult problem. Let's just keep it on board. Here uh, we find uh, a guillemot. And this one clearly died from, uh, from oil pollution. There's a large, large patch all over the side here and also a bit in the wings that is uh, fouled with oil, which means the plumage is, is not waterproof anymore. And so it, it uh, dies from, from cold and uh, it uses too much energy to uh, keep, keep warm and, and to feed. We're all familiar with images of oil victims it's a heartbreaking sight. How many more reasons do we need to responsibly dispose of our waste oil and chemicals? Tankers have to clean their holds after unloading, often producing hazardous liquids. The disposal of this liquid waste is a task for a highly specialized ship like this one, the Hydrovac 10. She's equipped with several separated tanks and a double hull for safety. The captain of the Hydrovac already knows what kind of waste the next ship on his list has to unload. The moment it moors, the captain gets a message and he's on his way. All ships have bilge water and sludge to dispose of. Sometimes, the hydrovac also takes in the cleaning water from the hold, often contaminated with chemicals. No risks are taken here. For every load, two samples are taken, one for the captain of the ship unloading and one for the captain of the hydrovac. Forms are checked and signed for the captain of the Hydrovac to take with him. Every litre of load is accounted for. The loaded Hydrovac then heads for the recycling plant. There, the plant too takes samples. The samples are taken to the lab to be analyzed. At the same time, the paperwork is taken care of and the load is officially handed over. At the lab, every chemical is isolated. Again, no risks are taken because the factory works with living bacteria to process the oily water waste. But first the oil has to be extracted. That is what happens here. Chemicals are added to thicken the oil and allow it to come to the surface where it can easily be removed. Recently harvested dirty oil gets a second life in this factory, where it's used as a fuel for cleaning dirty soil. And this is where the last step takes place, the cleaning of the leftover dirty water.
It's done by microscopic workers, bacteria. Once free of toxins, the water is clean enough for it to be transported to a standard water purifying plant to end up in the open water. You can gradually see that there's less birds with, with oil in their feathers on the, on the beaches, which, considering the fact that there's higher intensity of shipping, is a good sign that in the long run, if you pay enough attention and create awareness that it does help. Awareness is realizing that every tiny bit of plastic and every drop of oil in an ocean of water has some effect. Plastic is staying there forever, breaking down in tiny little pieces, ending up in birds and fish, and eventually maybe even ending up in us. The answer to this couldn't be simpler. With the right facilities at the end of a journey, all the ships have to do is hold on to their waste until they arrive.